What's up everybody, this is Alex from The Durand and today I'm going to go over a really interesting uh, video that, uh, an interview from Tucker Carlson tonight. Um, the interview is with uh, George Papadopoulos' wife. If, uh, if anyone's forgotten who George Papadopoulos was, he's the one that's often cited as, as uh, the reason the FBI uh, uh, petitioned for a FISA warning to spy on Trump. Um, he's considered by many on the left uh, CNN, MSNBC, as the genesis of uh, of the Trump-Russia collusion narrative. Uh, I like to call it the Trump-Russia collusion hoax because it, it is truly a hoax. And it was, actually looks more and more like it was a complete setup. And so Papadopoulos, George Papadopoulos, was a 28-year-old uh, low-level advisor in the Trump campaign. Uh, never even met uh, Trump. But, uh, you know, he was ambitious and he was looking to, to get ahead. And he got a, a message from uh, Stefan Halper, who was the FBI uh, informant, the spy that was placed in and around the Trump campaign. Um, I guess he was Peter Strzok, uh, Peter Strzok, the other FBI agent who sent that message. He was uh, the the Plan B in case anything had happened with the Hillary Clinton uh, campaign. So I guess Stephen Halper was the FBI's uh, Plan B go-to. And so he invited uh, Strzok with the promise of $3,000 cash to, to come to London and take part in a seminar in, in some sort of event. And uh, it was uh, Stephen Halper who, who brought him to London. Um, in London, Papadopoulos met with uh, this Maltese uh, professor um, in the UK. So this guy, uh, Professor Mifsud, um, was the guy who, who was working with, uh, with Halper, it appears. Um, he's often cited to be a, a Russian spy, but actually it looks like he's more like a, like a UK spy, MI, MI5, MI6. And uh, together with Halper, they, uh, they it sounds strange to say, but they, they got uh, Papadopoulos uh, into a pub drinking one night, and uh, George Papadopoulos shot his mouth off. He started talking about... Uh, WikiLeaks and, and emails that are about to be released. And, uh, you know, drinking with Papadopoulos was uh, Downing, Alexander Downing, who was an Australian diplomat who uh, lobbied the Australian government to donate $25 million to the Hillary Clinton, uh, to the Clinton Foundation. And so he was, you know, present when Papadopoulos was, was drunk, talking about uh, WikiLeaks and and uh, emails, Hillary Clinton emails, and so he contacted the FBI, and everything was set into motion um, for the FISA warrant, for the FBI spying on the Trump campaign, and what eventually would become the Mueller investigation into Trump-Russia collusion. And now here's uh, Tucker Carlson speaking with George Papadopoulos, his wife. And this is a fascinating interview. Well, after more than a year of wasted time on the fantasy of Russian collusion in the 2016 election, there's still no evidence that any of it actually happened. That doesn't mean that lives haven't been destroyed. Many have been, beginning with George Papadopoulos, who at the time was a 28-year-old unpaid advisor to the campaign. He later pled to a charge of making false statements to federal investigators looking into Russia. He has not yet been sentenced. Simone... And so Papadopoulos has not been charged with collusion or being a Russian spy. He basically, um, the FBI just caught him on a technicality. That is, he, he you know, he's a young guy. They probably scared him to death. And he ended up t telling a lie. And, and they got him on, on that. Uh, Magiante Papadopoulos is his wife. And she joins us tonight. Mrs. Papadopoulos, thanks for coming on. Thank you for hosting me. So um, you married your husband after this investigation began, after he'd become famous for his purported collusion with Russia. You're confident he did not collude in any way with the Russian government? I know he did not. And actually, one of the reasons why I'm here tonight, and thank you for hosting me, is to set the record straight about uh, um, George, in particular uh, in response to James Comey's um, statements on national TV recently, in which he says that George tried actively to obtain uh, emails on Hillary Clinton. This statement is completely false. George never had any interaction with the Russians. He has never been to Russia either. He, he never, he doesn't speak Russian, never talked to Russian officials, yet is apparently at the origin of the Russian investigation. This is quite... He's not the origin of the Russian investigation, and George has nothing to do, Papadopoulos has nothing to do with Russia. He's actually a, a Middle East expert. 
Um, you know, once again, he was just a young 28-year-old guy just trying to move ahead in, in D.C. politics. It's par paradoxical for me. So um, my understanding is that all of this begins in March of 2016 when he's approached in London by a Maltese professor. The Maltese professor. This is the guy that's, this is the real genesis of the Trump-Russia collusion, is this Maltese professor. Who has since disappeared with the mm -hmm. offer of information from the Russians. What has happened to that professor, do you know? Uh, well, I know personally this professor because I used to work with them. So she, Papadopoulos' wife, who he married after this, uh, this uh, collusion stuff, this hoax broke, she worked for the Maltese professor. So, I mean, this is it's, 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 it's just insane. Uh, the fact that they completely disappeared um, is very suspicious, but what I know about this meeting uh, between George and the professor is that he was talking casually about uh, uh, an information that was already in the public domain at the time uh, they met, and it was about emails on Hillary Clinton. We have to understand he was talking about email on Hillary Clinton, and not about the DNC emails. Right. So it's a completely different topic. Uh, it was a gossip conversation, very casual, that George voluntarily reported to the FBI at the time of their interview, and it became the, apparently the reason why um, people think he is the origin of any thing so-called collusion, but actually never colluded with the Russia. And he, he, didn't, he didn't do anything in Russia. Even his job, his work was completely focused in the Middle East, in particular in Israel. No, of course. He, he, he worked at the Hudson Institute here and was a big proponent of Israel. So this professor, who do you think he was working for? What was that about? And where do you think he's gone? What was his... British intelligence, Tucker. He was British intelligence. He's connected to Alper. Alper's connected to the FBI. She's connected to this Maltese professor. They're connected to Alexander Downer, who's connected to, all, to the Australian government, who donated 25 million to the Clinton Foundation. And they called the FBI and they got the whole thing, the whole Russia collusion thing kicked off. You want to find out what's going on with, with this Russia collusion hoax and get to the bottom of it, you start with the source. And the source is this professor Mifsu, this Maltese professor who's gone missing in Italy. Find him and you uh, break the Russia, the Trump-Russia collusion hoax wide open. His agenda. Uh, I honestly have no idea. My personal opinion, which I shared in different interviews, is that he's a very shady uh, character. Uh, but you worked for him. Shady character, but you worked for him. He could be in Italy. Um, recently, uh, I heard uh, he's, he doesn't want to uh, appear publicly uh, because of the, the situation he's involved in to and directly uh, through George. But uh, my understanding is that he was gossiping about uh, emails. And uh, again, I remember this information was already highly speculated by all media all over the world at the time. So there was nothing secret about that. Uh, yet, uh, as I said, it's very uh, fascinating and actually frustrating to see my husband at the center of this investigation uh, for talking in a bar, uh, even the meeting with Downer, which apparently in London, which apparently right. originated the Russia investigation, is contested by the same Downer. He never um, uh, confirmed that uh, George explicitly uh, talked about uh, emails. Uh, so it doesn't, um, no, it, it's, it's I, really... uh, it doesn't make a lot of sense. Where is your husband now? He's under a gag order, is my understanding, awaiting sentencing. Is that right? Yes, he's, he's awaiting sentencing. Uh, that's why I think it's very important to set this, the record straight right now. Because there are a lot of misunderstandings about his situation, about his role. Uh, I used to say that his role is very important. I, I used to compare him to John Dean. I never meant uh, to make this comparison in the sense that it would lead to the president impeachment. Actually, I think right. it's a key role because he has been approached by many um, different character that let's let's say spies. He has been the victim of many setups, not only Holper, other setups. Do and you, I'm sure he will be happy to share this information when the time is right. Do you think that your husband's going to prison? I honestly, uh, I know how much dedicated and committed was in the Trump campaign. I know he did an excellent job. I know he's by uh, serious, because of this incident, his freedom is challenged. So I trust and hope and I ask to President Trump to pardon him. I hope he will. Okay. Ms. Papadopoulos, thank you very much for coming on. I appreciate it.
appreciate it. And there it is. Uh, so he, Trump should definitely pardon uh, Papadopoulos. He should also pardon Flynn. Uh, Manafort is a different story, but you know, Flynn and Papadopoulos were, were ensnared in this thing on, on a technicality by the FBI. Uh, they did nothing wrong, that's, or nothing at least that has to do with Trump-Russia collusion, that's for sure, and especially Papadopoulos. The only thing Papadopoulos is guilty of is being drunk at a London pub and speaking to a couple of FBI and British spies. And uh, just, you know, he was really just set up. Um, he was the patsy in this whole thing. And so there you have it. It was a great interview by, uh, by Tucker with Papadopoulos' wife. Uh, once again, if they want to get to the bottom of, uh, of the Trump-Russia collusion hoax, Tucker knows this as well. All they have to do is just find that Maltese uh, professor, get him over to, to Congress, and you know everything will pretty much be cleared up once they, uh, they question that guy. Uh, let's see if they find him and they subpoena him and they, get, and they get him to the U.S. Anyway, guys, I hope you liked the video. Um, if you did, subscribe down below by clicking the red subscribe button. Don't forget to click the notifications bell so you can get notifications every time we push out a new video. And remember to go to the Duran shop and pick yourself up a t-shirt. Every uh, t-shirt that you buy goes to help the Duran, and it keeps us alive and keeps us broadcasting. Take care.